Go to a what? Oh, a munch. It's it's a dinner usually, actually. Uh-huh. But folks come and they actually meet people in the BDSM community. Maybe they're new or maybe mm-hmm. you know they've been in for a while. So you get to meet people in a restaurant where it's safe, and you get to know the community before you start trying to you know beat anyone with anything. <laughs> Do you think that your audience is fundamentally different than the regular porn audience? Because I feel that people, the BDSM community is a a pretty specific, people with pretty specific tastes. I was in a BDSM relationship for like a year and I learned a lot in that relationship. And I learned that like people are fucking serious about their kink. (laughs) Like... They're very, and I used to shoot for Taboo for Hustler sure. Magazine and Cynthia Patterson. I don't know if you know her. Mm. Like, so she was the editor, and holy shit, I got yelled at so much for doing things wrong. Like, I remember I turned in like a sexy set of like a Dom, and she had like a collar on because I was like, that's kinky. You know what I mean? Like, that like looks like overall the stereotype. And she was like, she's not a sub, she doesn't wear a collar. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> like no like, totally yeah like they're very specific and they they want it done fucking right and there's like an intellectualism to BDSM that I think is so different than the regular like cowgirl reverse cowgirl doggy style missionary like That's gonzo in a white room and like yeah come on her face you know what I mean I totally do and I I think that I think about like BDSM to sex as sort of like I don't know Dungeons and Dragons to like a video game. Like they're just, it's so much more cerebral. It's so much more Mm -hmm. um, protocols and rules. And in your, it's very, you know, it's in your head. It's very much about fantasy to a degree that, to the nth degree past just vanilla sex. Right. That said, I think there are a lot of folks who, who find that kind of sex exciting and want to watch it, but don't necessarily want to collar anyone or go to a munch or do this all in the real life. Like go to a what? Oh, a munch. What's so if, munch? if you're kind of Is new a, a to the BDS, it's you... kind of, it's it's a dinner usually actually, uh-huh. but folks come and they actually meet people in the BDSM community. Maybe they're new or maybe, mm-hmm. you know, they've been in for a while. So you get to meet people in a restaurant where it's safe and you get to know the community before you start trying to, you know, beat anyone with anything. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> munch. I love that. Sorry, I interrupted totally. you. What were you talking about? Oh, so I think that, yes, people who are kind of lifestylers or super, super, super into BDSM, I don't know. They're not so different from the rest of us. Although, you know, I think we're all nerds. I think it's a nerdy kind of thing. And, and I say that with a lot of pride as a nerd. Yeah. But also, I think that there are things about power exchange that are sexy no matter where you kind of fall in your personal sex life. Right, right. I just mean, I guess what I mean is, you know, your audience is comprised of people who are looking for specific, pretty specific things. Often. Like, they're not somebody who is just going to jump on Pornhub and watch whatever, like, big-titted stepmom MILF scene is there for the day, you know what I mean? And not really care. Like they, they have yes and no. like more, I don't know, more like cultured tastes. I don't know why. I'm imagining <laughs> that they have a monocle. Like, oh God, they're they like, just, yeah, I, I need it, a very specific kind of cake. It depends on the day. Yeah. Like a lot of people, you know, maybe they have a BDSM scene half the time and just like regular old vanilla sex half the time. And I think that it's probably their porn consumption patterns too. Mm. Like the thing that you're into, maybe you're not into it every single day. Right. Or maybe it evolves. So maybe they're jumping on Pornhub occasionally, but they know that if they come to kink, they can get the thing that they right. want. Yeah, because it is a pretty specific thing. And, yeah. and I feel like there's a lot of thought and care put into all of the scenes. It's not a haphazard throw together kind of... No, we can't just like rent a hotel room and yeah, exactly. book performers last minute. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, we actually have to work specifically with performers who want to do this and enjoy it. Right. And, you know, a lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I suppose there are people who are willing to get tied up for pay, but we actually just really don't like working with those folks because we want to have an authentic scene. Mm. That's what's actually hot. Mm-hmm. So we just don't work with those people. 
Right. So do you find that you end up hiring the same people quite a bit? Yeah. I mean, there's pros and cons to that. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, certainly there are people that people are like, oh, this person again. Mm-hmm. But also those people tend to have amazing scenes because right. they're super into what they're doing. Right. And so most of our, our members are actually really thrilled by the folks who they they know are really into it. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, Isis Love is one of the top performers on our site, the most interest people have. And frankly, she was retired for years and years, but her scenes are so freaking good. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't Yeah, I was going to say, I shot her like years ago for Brazzers, and I think she reti- had retired then or came back for a scene. or that, I mean, it was like at the end of her. Yeah. She was like done. Uh-huh. Wow. She just came back recently for a single scene. So that's super exciting. With you guys? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. But for years in between, mm-hmm. there was no ISIS content. But right. people just, I think that the BDSM folks maybe appreciate a little bit more, like, the folks who they know are, are super into what they're doing. Yeah. There's something very enjoyable about watching somebody enjoy what they're doing. The fans can tell when you're yes. doing something for a paycheck. I, I have noticed that. You know, the most popular girls are generally the ones who really love their jobs. And, you know, for you and I who see them offset, like, we know who really loves their job and who's <laughs> yeah. there for a paycheck. Like, we know that. And I feel yeah. like the fans can can feel that a lot of the time. And who wants to watch porn where someone looks bored? Yeah. I mean, maybe someone does. Somebody Perhaps probably, that's even a fetish. Somebody probably <laughs> does, yeah. But it's not my deal, and I don't think it's most people's. Yeah, I agree. I've heard a lot of girls talk about how they will have their first experiences with BDSM or try out things with you guys because they trust you as a company. Yeah. One person that comes to mind, and she told this story on my podcast, if you guys go back and listen to the episode, you can hear it in detail, is Danny Daniels. And she did uh, the training of O, mm-hmm. I believe, with you guys. And she was deathly afraid of caning. I think was so. It? Or it was electricity. Now I can't remember. Uh, Let's call it caning. I think it was caning caning, to the point where she said if somebody brought a cane out, she'd kind of start to hyperventilate. I mean, they're pretty nasty. I've been caned once and I did not enjoy it. Yeah. (laughs) It was not, never again. Uh, And I believe Ramon was her scene partner. And there was a way that, it was over, I think, a few day period Mm -hmm. where you guys took her through a sequence of events where she. It was like almost like Pavlov training, you know? She began to associate caning with pleasure Mm -hmm. rather than the opposite, and it completely overcame her fear of caning. And it was so interesting to me how, you know, a a kinky experience could psychologically change somebody in a way, in a positive way. Yeah. It's it's not even uncommon for people to— especially in people who are are in the scene, Mm -hmm. to use BDSM to kind of work out trauma. Yes. And I I think it's incredible. You know, I really hope that they're doing all of the work they need to do outside of Mm -hmm. BDSM scenes. It's not in any way, you know, a A substitute for therapy. therapy. (laughs) Yeah, yes, this is true. (laughs) And it's it's just really amazing to me the healing power it can have. Mm -hmm. And just how hot something can become that maybe it wasn't before or mm-hmm. isn't the first thing you think of when you think of sex. Mm-hmm. It's it's fascinating. Yeah. That's one of the things I really love about working in this industry. You know, sexuality is such a powerful force. And I think it's something that we still don't really understand all that much. No. I you mean, know, it's so multifaceted and different for everybody and everyone has a different experience. And it is true that people can really work out certain traumas and and everything through sex, which is not something that most people think one would do. I think, you know, a lot of people have this misconception that sex is dirty and sex is always damaging. So the idea that it right. could be healing in some way, I think is a foreign concept to a lot of people. Oh, especially for women. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, you know, think about how much we can even study sex. Mm-hmm. It's in- 
incredibly difficult to get a grant or any kind of funding to do any research on sexuality. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that, but you're right. So we're in the dark. Yeah. We're kind of all just figuring it out. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.